To this presentation. Uh, it's one that I, I noticed uh, in the schedule I was very excited about. Um, there was a, a lot of math and a lot of uh, complexity to pattern making, and people uh, often forget how, how complex and how much technology has been driven by trying to solve this, and how much um, of the execution is still by hand. Uh, so we have a very uh, special uh, talk tonight. Uh, now, um, I wanted to remind you all to, um, to continue to hydrate. I know that we always encourage you, but just think, you know, where is your hydration source right now? It's trying to keep you alive. Are you allowing it to keep you alive? You might want to think about it, especially as the night continues. Um, also, uh, th there's opportunities to uh, be an angel. Uh, all across uh, this conference is the best way to really get to know how things work and contribute. I mean, we are all collectively volunteering to make this happen. And so uh, find a way to give back. It's, it's really uh, rewarding. Uh, and in some cases, you know, actually literally rewarding. They'll give you a shirt uh, and you can get some food vouchers and that kind of thing. Um, also, they made special patches uh, just for uh, two of the most important, you might not think, but the most important uh, angel tasks, which is uh, waste and parking. Uh, so, they, so those patches are quite nice, and the only way to get them is to sign up to be an angel and contribute in that way. Um, yeah, so we will, we will jump into the, the talk now. Uh, so uh, our, our uh, event tonight is uh, free sewing, sewing patterns based on code. We have uh, Alexander here. This is an opportunity to learn about uh, this open source platform, um, and Alexander is uh, as described by, by this uh, uh, introduction, um, an enthusiastic contributor. This, so you, you're going to get to know a lot of things about this project, uh, which has a lot more implications for you and your life and how you wear clothes and how you might wear clothes. So uh, enjoy. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alexander, as told. Uh, I'm a 20 year old from the Netherlands and here to represent free, free sewing. Um, so, um, this is a plat um, simply said, it's a platform that turns your measurements into a, a sewing pattern made for your body. So, that enables you to make clothes for your body that fit you great well. Um, free sewing aims to become the Wikipedia of sewing with not just sewing patterns, but also sewing guides, programming guides, GitHub guides, community guides. Um, so let's just jump right in. Yes, awesome. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning, a sewing pattern. It's basically a piece of fabric that you sew together to become a garment. In the fashion industry, um, these patterns are based on the ideal body, um, which is usually a skinny white woman or a high fashion model of the catwalk. And sewing patterns are based on this body and therefore clothing that you buy in stores as well. So um, we will talk more about that. Free sewing strengths and flaws, components of a free sewing pattern and upcoming plans. Let's see. So, like I said, the ideal body, a mannequin on which sewing patterns are drafted on, and you buy these based on the ideal body, the ideal body that doesn't exist. And this, this ideal body also differs between designers, so um, it makes it even harder to find the right size for you. And um, these garments, are then categorized into two genders, men's wear, women's wear, little room for inclusivity. So some garments are simple, like a face mask, it's just four pieces of fabrics, you add some elastic straps, and you have a face mask. With a pattern like this, um, you can get away with making just a few sizes and it will fit most people. Of course, especially in a pandemic, 
its importance to have a, pet, a mascot fissure well. But since it's only one measurement that you take into account, you, you can get away with just making two sizes and most people will fit them. Um, let's see. But then you have more complicated patterns like dress shirts, which can easily take more than 10 measurements. Um, So something like this is harder to make for multiple sizes. And uh, what clothing stores do is they just make the pattern based on their mannequin and they grade it up and down. But this isn't how bodies work. Um, this doesn't accompany uh, plus size bodies, for example. And, and um, sewing patterns, actually, if you already so close and you buy a sewing pattern, these are also often based on a mannequin. So even if you sew your own clothes, you may still run into this problem. So between stores, sizes also vary wildly. Um, as you can see, um, size eight, different stores have different ideas of what that looks like. And there's another problem. Vanity sizing is what this is called. Um, it's clothing stores. They label their garments as a smaller size because they know their consumers will feel flattered by wearing something that's a small size. And this makes it even harder, these two things, to find clothes that fit you. And it, it goes beyond finding your size as well. Um, what clothing stores do, or the fashion industry in general, is trends. Trends exist to make more money. They know if consumers feel out of date, they will buy more clothes. Um, this is mainly the case with women's wear. Um, so with fashion trends being pumped out every few months, or e even every month, um, Clothing stores don't get the time to uh, make sure their garment fits properly. So they would rather just churn out clothes quick, fast, more, um, than make sure they fit properly. So it's not just a sizing issue. It's also that clothing stores know that they're selling garments that don't fit properly. And this hurts them too, because the most common problem or reason that people return their clothes is because of a bad fit. And it takes a lot of money for these companies to cover those costs. And if you return a garment, it doesn't even get resold. It just gets thrown away. So it costs a lot of money, a lot of pollution. But clothing stores would rather just do that and keep up with trends than actually properly make clothes at least in the fast fashion world. So, a good fit is important if you want to look your best. But it can be very expensive to buy made-to-measure clothes or to get your clothes tailored. So, what can you do? Free sewing is where that comes into play. <laughs> The founder, Joost, he wanted to make made-to-measure patterns more accessible, because it can be very hard and can take a lot of time to make patterns that fit your body. So, with a platform like Free Sewing, it becomes easier to make clothes that fit you, that actually properly fit you, and that are of good quality, because you make them yourself, unless you fuck up. <laughs> And you can make clothes in your own style as well. You don't have to rely on whatever is trendy at the moment. You, or you don't have to rely on some niche site in the faraway corners of the internet. You can just make it yourself and make what you want to wear. So, but there is a lot more wrong with the fast fashion industry than just sizing. We have exploitation pollution, environment problems, climate change, mental health. It's, it's not just sizing. 
Um, but this, this isn't a talk about the fashion industry. But this is important to keep in mind because um, does free sewing tackle those issues? It tries to, at least. But it's very ambitious to expect people to go and make their own clothes, of course, because it takes a lot of time and effort, resources. But making made-to-measure patterns accessible to the world, it's a good start. It makes it more accessible for people to mend their clothes when there's a hole in it instead of throwing those clothes away or tailoring your own, your own clothes that you already have into things that actually fit you. And it also enables sewists to um, make clothes or made to measure patterns. Maybe they don't know how to draft a pattern to someone's measurements and they can just use free sewing and then make and sell these made to measure patterns. Patterns. It even makes it more accessible to stores. Um, someone in our Discord server, our chat room, uh, has been occasionally sharing updates of his project. Um, after summer, uh, he's um, opening a pop-up store in London where people can get measured and right then, right then and there, a shirt will be made based on those measurements. And this system is based on free sewing system. So here are some other things that I think the world could pick up on from free sewing. Um, so first up, inclusivity. Instead of dividing patterns between menswear and women's wear, or masculine or feminine, free sewing is gender neutral, or it tries very hard to be. Um, we also don't, when we ask for measurements, we don't do men, women. It's genderless, Is we ask with breasts or without breasts, because breasts do impact the fit of a garment significantly. So, recycling parts. With free sewing, you can just take one part, use it in another pattern. Whereas, if you're a sewing company, you can't really get away with doing that. Um, you're expected to make new patterns. And you can even remix an existing pattern into a new one. And this is completely OK. Nobody will call you out for that. Third up, there is no worries of trends. There, is not an, a, there isn't a hungry audience waiting for a brand shiny new pattern every month. Uh, we don't have to worry about f uh, fitting into these boxes of modern sewing patterns or this or that. Um, so it's, it's designers, they can make what they're passionate about. They don't have to worry about all those things. So the patterns that get made, they're made in people's free time and they're made out of passion. So because of this, free sewing also has a lot of historical patterns aside from just uh, everyday ones. And we even have uh, patterns for stuffed animals now. Um, so, uh, you know the IKEA shark that's really popular? If uh, IKEA lets you down and discontinue that, you can just make your own, because we have a new one right? now. It's a new pattern, and um, free sewing won't let you down. <laughs> but there are a few limitations to free sewing. Um, so, although it's a great start to make patterns based on measurements this way, um, some patterns uh, still have trouble to support some types of bodies, like plus-sized ones, or those that are in a wheel use a wheelchair, or a different posture, or children. Um, measurements can take all these factors into account. Um, because whereas in the fashion industry, a pattern designer drafts their clothes on a, an ideal body that doesn't exist, um, here, uh, a pattern also has to be drafted on the body, which is often, in free sewing, the designer themselves. Um, which, may, which may be hard to take other bodies into account that way. 
So although it's a great start and a lot of patterns can uh, support a lot of bodies, um, measurements don't fix all sizing issues. Then second up, measurements itself can be a problem as well because you need to take the measurements yourself and you may not have a measuring tape or a friend to help you. Um, so it's, it's easy to get measurements wrong and that will also get the pattern to drafts wrong. So that is one limit of free sewing. Aside from that, free sewing relies completely on volunteers, which is, which is great, it's not a problem, but it does make things inconsistent sometimes. Um, free sewing doesn't grow the same way the average sewing pattern company does. So let's jump into the technical aspects of a free sewing pattern, because after all, that's what this conference is about. Um, this is a graph of everything that goes into a free sewing pattern. So um, it's made the same way you would make a sewing pattern on paper. You draw lines, very simply put. Uh, in this um, case, paths. Um, and with free sewing, you draw those lines with JavaScript and coordinates. Coordinates, points here. Uh, yeah, points. Um, and these coordinates, they depend on what the designer, the measurements the designer chose and the options the designer chose, config. And of course, the measurements the user puts in and the preference that the user puts in, settings. Then what's left is store. Um, this is where a designer can store information, so multiple parts of one pattern can use that information. And snippets. If you make a lot of pants, for example, pants patterns, you're not gonna make a, a button, a graph every time. You're not gonna code that every time you make pants. So snippets are small, often reused parts of a sewing pattern that you can just easily get out there. So then points, paths, snippets make up one part of a sewing pattern. For example, the sleeves. If you make multiple parts, there's your free sewing pattern. So these patterns are scalable vector graphics, also known as SVGs. Most of you probably already know what that is, but I'll explain it quickly for those who don't know. Um, so you don't actually draw a line made, of a, made up of a row of pixels because if you resize that, change it around, it will get blurry and unusable. Instead, the line is based on a starting point and an end point, which will always make just a nice crisp line. And you can just add control points, the, the line will change, but it will still be crisp, sharp. So these SVGs are, uh, can be downloaded then into PDFs by the user can also be rendered into the browser with React. So in open source um, communities, it's easy to tunnel vision uh, into code contributions and progress. Um, and not other ones like documentation. But with free sewing, uh, you really can't get away with that, with slacking on these non-code contributions. Um, because if you don't have the sewing instructions, you can't sew the pattern unless you're an expert. But and you may have a perfect technical drawing, but if you don't know what it looks like on a real human person, then you're also missing information. So this is what also goes into a free sewing pattern. So of course, free sewing plans to grow. Um, contributors uh, that don't know code can also help with the previously mentioned parts because I think free sewing is a great way for uh, people to get familiar with open source projects but without, without having to do code. So I think free sewing is the perfect combination of art and code. I think the two can really thrive here. So free sewing plans to grow. And 
One of the things we've been focusing on is making patterns more inclusive. Like the flaw I mentioned that some bodies are still not supported by some patterns. Where we've been figuring out ways discussing how to fix this. And we've been making progress, but there's still a long way to go. And then another type of inclusivity as well, we're trying to get away from gendered language as much as possible. Um, free sewing has a new version on its way, version three. Um, a big focus of that is, um, is a better user experience. So not only a fast and intuitive site would be nice, but also to improve how people can use our patterns. Because um, sometimes things aren't clear on how to use it and with better clarifications. That, um, and there's a lot more coming in version three that, um, that's too technical for me that I don't understand. And then last, um, we also want to show more appreciation to, for contributors for different types of contributions. We've already made a huge step by adding the all contributors page to GitHub, which shows all the contributors and all the things that they do. Um, but we're all also trying to make contributors more visible on the site itself. So if you go to a patterns page, it's not just designer and their name, but there's also information there. So that was free sewing. Um, don't hesitate to stop by if you have any ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Now, I want to encourage people to uh, line up uh, at the microphone in the middle to ask questions. Uh, but first, I want to check and see. Um, well, okay. I guess we don't have uh, right. We don't have a signal question, uh, but I do have. Uh, a question that was asked by some of members of my village who really wanted to come. Um, are, are, there, are there ways that this, um, this approach deals with the natural asymmetries in the human body? Yeah, that is also uh, one part. Um, for example, shoulder slope has, um, can be very asymmetrical in most people, that's the case. Um, so there are guides on that, but that is also part of the supporting different bodies. It's asymmetry, yeah. Uh, great. Uh, would you like to ask the first question? Yes. Uh, great project. Great talk. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I was wondering, um, uh, have any of you already been experimenting with simulating different types of fabric? Uh, for instance, with the cloth material in Bender, or sorry, Blender. And that's a good one. Um, we've been talking about it, but it's mostly been like a far away idea that we could do, but it's, it's very hard to actually put into code and have users uh, use it. But um, yeah, fabric is very important for patterns, of course, and uh, we also take that into account. Um, but yeah, that is something that we are looking forward to in the future. Thank you. Hi, um, I was wondering how big the community and the database of Python is at the moment. Sorry, can you repeat that? How big is, uh, uh, how many are you contributing to the project at the moment and how many patterns are available on the website? Uh, sorry, I... Uh, if you have a rough ID. Uh, sorry, I don't understand your question. Uh, the, the size of the community, yeah. if, I, if I'm getting this right, the size of the current community using oh. this. Um. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's uh, um, in the Discord there are a few thousand people, I think. Um, but it's, it's not as big as the average sewing company um, or average sewing communities. It's uh, still pretty small. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question. All right, thank you. Um, I am terrible. I have two left hands. There's no way that I'll ever accomplish something like this. Have you seen any integration into automated uh, uh, ways to actually get these patterns on? Yeah, so um, that's a good one. Um, that's uh, the mention of that guy who's doing a pop-up store, for example. 
Um, so it would be nice if stores could do this. That would probably be uh, one of the solutions to exploitation in the fashion industry as well. Um, but free sewing is mostly about the patterns itself and users who can use that or stores. So, thank you. I'm standing on my toes. Um, so this relates to the measurements. Um, have you already investigated if, could, uh, if you could perhaps use uh, 3D scanning? So somebody takes a picture of the person all around and use that to generate a 3D map of the person and get all the measurements. Have you looked at yeah, that? Yeah, that would be, thank you for the question. That, that would be one of the uh, things that could really help with the struggle to support different types of bodies. Um, but it's really hard to actually do that and put it into uh, a practice and with what we already have. But it's, it's definitely something for in the future to take inspiration from maybe work towards. There have been uh, people actually who have, uh, in the server who have mentioned that before, so maybe. Um, uh, I actually have two, um, they're very small ones. Uh, one, is there also a tutorial on how to measure properly? Because you mentioned- uh, Yeah, okay. that is there as well. And um, now I'm forgetting the other one. <laughs> Um, had to do with, uh, oh yeah, I remember it again. Um, it's probably also a very generic one, I'm completely new to sewing, but uh, if, if you don't have a printer, or if you only have a, uh, one that can do 3D, uh, no, A, A4, sorry, uh, is that gonna be a problem? I, thank you for the question, that's a good question. Um, so, um, we have a tiler that does, um, converts the pattern into uh, A4s, but also other sizes. And there's also a pattern, uh, it's a paperless version, um, which um, shows all the distances of the pattern. Um, I can maybe use visual aid for this. Um, so there's a, a paperless version that says like, this is this long, this is that long, this is that long, and you can just convert it onto paper yourself. Thank you. Um, you say it's difficult to take measurements, and it's always a bit confusing indeed, because you're working on your own body. Something that really worked for me, I don't sew a lot, but something that really worked for me is just take something that fits well and measure that size. Or for t-shirts, I once put pins in it and just copy that. That would work as well, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, the thing is with taking uh, clothes is that, yeah, they're clothes. Um, but yeah, if you would pin that to your body, that would be one of the ways to make it more easy for people. Um, but the average person that has trouble with measurements are, um, how do I say this? People who are not familiar with measurements, so also not really familiar with uh, pinning to your body, for example. Thank you. And uh, uh, w one last question for you uh, from, from the same folks who really wanted to come. Uh, what is the uh, iteration model for trying to improve e either as a designer who's contributing or uh, one who is uh, cutting to, to use these patterns uh, to get, like, over time to, to target better fit? Um, what the main uh, uh, goal is, you mean? Well, um, yes. How do um, typically do people improve their, um, the patterns so that they, they work better in the future from, uh, you know, from, from the community and from feedback? Oh, good. Um, yeah, so it's, um, patterns get improved when people uh, come to us in the server and they say, this doesn't fit me, this doesn't work for my body. And we, the designer and the person, they look at what's going on and how to fix it, how to improve it. And um, just doing it a lot also helps improve. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much. And uh, we have just time for one last final question. Very quick, uh, small question. Uh, the percentages on this slide, are those that you fill in yourself or those calculated based on your measurements? Uh, percentages? Uh, on, on this exact slide. 
because I oh, for myself yeah. I wouldn't know how many percent chest ease I would need if that makes sense. Yeah, so um, these, these are the standard uh, versions. So it's also that you can make the percentage smaller and it, the ease will become less, so it will become tighter. Um, so it's, it's just uh, the standard percentages for a pattern that you can also make smaller. Does this make sense? These are the defaults, if that makes sense? Yes. All right, cool. Thank you. So thank you very much for your questions and thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. If you have further questions, please uh, chat with Alexander um, off to the side, and we'll I get ready. I have stickers ready. over there. Sorry. Oh yes, and there are stickers up here, very important, uh, that you, you saw teased in the presentation. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, please uh, continue to ask questions and learn about this uh, this amazing amazing resource that's being developed, and contribute. Um,